This video is about referred pain, the phenomenon where an injury occurs in one location, but the pain is experienced somewhere else. Over the next 8 minutes, I'm going to run through some of the major principles of referred pain, before applying them to the abdomen. But before I can talk about referred pain, I need to look at how regular pain works. Normally pain in the body travels to the spinal cord via a first order neuron. From here a second order neuron relays signals to the thalamus, before a third order neuron enters the sensory cortex of the brain. At this point the brain relates that signal to a map of the body and establishes that our pain in the neck is, well, a pain in the neck. With referred pain this process goes awry. Now pain signals leave one part of the body, but by the time those signals reach the brain, it thinks they've come from somewhere else. Typically this pain originates in an autonomically innovated structure, such as an organ. However, the sensation of pain is referred to a somatically innovated region, such as a dermatome. The connection between these areas isn't random. Both regions will share a common embryological origin, a relationship known as the dermatomal rule. They'll also share a closely related nerve supply, with sensory fibres from either structure entering the spinal cord at the same vertebral level. Any referred pain will present in the dermatome that matches the spinal level of the organ sensory fibres. For example, if sensation from an organ returns to the cord at C5, then pain from that structure can be referred to the C5 dermatome. If the visceral sensation enters the cord at multiple spinal levels, then pain can be referred to any or all of these dermatomes. Now there are a few ideas about how referred pain actually happens. The most commonly accepted, the convergent projection theory, suggests that it occurs when first order neurons from both regions synapse at the same second order neuron. In this model pain signals from either region then take the same route back to the cortex, leaving the brain to take its best guess as to where the pain came from. With no other way to distinguish them, the brain tends to assume the signals have come from the dermatome. Convergent projection is a great way to explain how the brain confuses pain signals from different locations. However, it doesn't necessarily explain an important feature of referred pain. Pain always refers from autonomic to somatic, never the other way round. For example, pain in the heart can refer to the left neck and shoulder, but an injury to the neck is never experienced as pain in the heart. Convergent facilitation proposes that both regions have largely separate neural pathways, but that a connection exists between them. Ordinarily, this connecting neuron have a higher threshold than the main pathway, and so signals don't travel along it. However, repeated stimulation of these fibres increases their sensitivity, allowing signals to pass from autonomic to somatic. This model also explains why there can be a delay before the onset of referred pain. Whatever the mechanism, there are some key points to remember about referred pain. First, pain originates in an autonomic region, but refers to a somatic region. Two, these regions share a common embryological origin and a similar nerve supply. And three, knowing where pain refers to can be a vital diagnostic tool. For example, if a patient experiences pain in their left shoulder, it's possible they've just been punched by an older sibling, but it could also be indicative of a problem with their heart. This can be particularly important in the abdomen, where problems with the viscera will present with clear patterns of referred pain. So with that in mind, let's draw out those patterns. Here we have an illustration of the abdominal viscera in the centre, with anterior and posterior views of the trunk on either side. If you're drawing along, you can find a link to this illustration below. And if you're not drawing along, you can find a TED talk on why you should be below that. If we look at the individual organs, we can see that each of them have a specific site of referred pain. For example, pain from the duodenum, or the head of pancreas, tends to be felt in the midline, just below the ribcage. Stomach pain can be found around this, extending to the left, but can also pass posteriorly between the shoulder blades. An injury to the spleen 
can prevent with pain on the left side of the abdominal wall. Meanwhile, pain on the right often relates to problems with the liver or gallbladder. These organs have a more extensive pattern of referred pain, converging on the midline anteriorly and then diverging posteriorly. Oddly, despite being found at the inferior border of the liver, pain from the gallbladder actually refers to a more superior location. Now you may also see problems in the foregut, causing pain around the neck and shoulder. This referred pain isn't coming directly from the abdominal viscera, but from a related structure, the diaphragm. The diaphragm overlies the liver, gallbladder and spleen. An issue with any of these organs can irritate the diaphragm, sending pain signals along the phrenic nerves that supply it. The phrenics originate from the nerve roots of C3, 4 and 5, and so, as per the dermatomal rule, pain signal from these nerves can refer to the dermatomes of the neck and shoulder. Each half of the diaphragm have its own phrenic nerve, meaning referred pain will only be found on the side of the injured organ. So, splenic problems can cause pain in the left shoulder, but biliary issues will refer to the right. Pain in the small intestine tend to be centred around the umbilicus. Pain from the appendix can also refer here, although it typically shifts into the right iliac fossa as it develops. The large intestine prevents with pain in the lower abdominal region, whilst pain in the bladder is experienced just above the pubis. Finally, we have the kidneys and the ureters. Referred pain from the kidneys is normally felt posteriorly over the flank. However, pain from the ureters can be more variable. The ureters have a relatively complex nerve supply, with each third innervated by fibres from a different spinal level. So, fibres from T12 innervate the upper third, L1 supplies the middle third, and the lower third is innervated by L2. The location of a ureteric problem will determine where the pain is referred to. For example, if a patient have a kidney stone lodged in the first third, they'll feel pain in their lower back around the T12 dermatome. However, as the obstruction travels down the ureter, the pain will shift anteriorly and inferiorly through the L1 and L2 dermatomes. This produces a characteristic pattern of ureteric pain that moves from loin to groin. So that's an overview of referred pain and how it can prevent in the abdomen. If you have any questions or problems, please just get in touch. And if you have other videos of sport people doing a hilariously bad job of fatigue and injury, please feel free to send those over too. But otherwise, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll hopefully see you soon.